Hello and welcome here at Head Audio in Berlin. I'm Klaus Heinz, one of the co-founders of the company, and I'm in charge to make the nicer products with a nicer sound, as the English people used to say. Today, we would like to introduce the Mark II series of monitors and for the first time to present subwoofers from Head Audio. The Mark II series has a number of very innovative features and the most important one are a COP, a closed or ported system that allows the user to choose which way to go. In the past of the speakers, as uh, everybody knows, of course, there are open and closed loudspeakers or bass reflex and infinite baffle systems, as they are called otherwise. And uh, you always have to decide if you buy a product, which way to go. What we introduce here is a switch and some plugs, which together enable you, the customer, to make either a closed system or a bass reflex system and what's most important, to get the best performance out of either mode. Second, uh, we do have a phase linear system where you can linearize the phase errors of the loudspeakers. Phase errors are a natural thing for each and every loudspeaker, be it passive or active. It has to do with the ground-taking harmonic um, analysis that says whatever ingredients a sound has, you can analyze it, you can uh, decompose it into single sine waves. And so the frequency components are those sine waves and their timely behavior one to each other is called the phase response. Due to the fact that loudspeakers influence frequency response, like the tweeter who cannot do the low frequencies and so on, there is always a problem in the timely behavior of loudspeakers. This is uh, not a mistake, but a ground-taking fact. So when the DSPs sh um, showed up like 25 years ago, it was possible to store music for a while in that DSP, which of course is not possible in a piece of wire. What is done is that the faster uh, frequencies, these are the high frequencies, have to be slowed or delayed, and they have to wait until the slowest frequencies, namely the low ones, have arrived. And that's what is realized mathematically by a so-called FIR filtering. And that's what we do with all the uh, models from the Mark II series in a very high resolution way. That means we have a newly developed DSP board that has high-end audio grade converters, that has a powerful shark processor that is able to do a phase linearization in a very high resolution and with a very good effect as far as our impressions go. And the third item under consideration um, is a subwoofer concept that goes beyond what has been done so far. Most of you will have, uh, say, mixed experiences with subwoofers and satellites. In many cases, the sound seems to fall apart, be not as homogeneous as you have uh, in mind, and a boominess of separate subwoofers is often to be heard. We think this has mainly to do with the fact that the phase uh, relationships between the subwoofer and satellites are even more complex and complicated and uh, mix up the, the transient behavior and uh, are the cause for the mixed impressions one can have from satellite subsystems. So what we do in the new subwoofers is that we linearize them similar to what we do with the Mark II monitors and even more if you use the analog outputs from the subwoofer we delay the satellites with their quicker behavior so long until the slower base waves have arrived so that the whole system can be called a linear phase satellite subsystem. And that should eliminate most of the unwanted effects if you use such a setup. Now, how is this realized? Now, let's turn one of these loudspeakers to the backside and then see what we find in the control panel. You will find a rich choice of controls. Some of them are conventional ones, some of them are really new. On the left side you have a classical volume gain pot for the loudness. The next one in the middle is the linearizer. We talked about the linearizer and it has to be mentioned that the linearization of a loudspeaker always 
costs time. That means there is a delay introduced the very moment you use a linearizer, like 10, 20 milliseconds. And in case you have a live recording or you play an instrument, you don't want that kind of delay. And so uh, you can switch it off there. Next thing is COP rotary switch. COP, we just discussed, is a close or ported choice. In the case you open up the carton, you have a normal base reflex box. That's why it's in the uh, ported position. However, you can insert some plugs into the tubes and so hermetically seal the system, changing it to an infinite baffle or closed system. It is important to switch to a different filter set because the ambition is that you can have optimum results in either mode, whether you have it ported or closed. So inserting or putting away the plugs on the one side and changing from closed or ported uh, position, whatever is corresponding for what you have done with the plugs. Then you have two conventional um, shell filters for the high and the low frequencies with plus minus 4 dB range. Next you have is an LF range switch. That means um, the moment you unpack the unit, you have the upright position of the knob indicating the normal performance as indicated in the data sheet. Then you have an extended position where the lower cutoff frequency is going 20% lower than uh, with the previous position. This comes on cost of the maximum volume that you can reach in the base region, however. If you want to have an astounding low end from the, uh, from the kind of, of volume we, we do have for the loudspeakers, then you can have that choice as well. And the third position is uh, for the moment you use these monitors as satellite speakers, then an 80 Hz Linkwitz Riley filter is applied so that it plays together rather well with the subwoofer. Next line we have an AAS input. I didn't mention that yet, but there is an AAS input together with the analog input. Here you choose whether it's analog or which one of the AS channels you want to listen to, left or right or mono. Then we have the input sensitivity. That is a volume pot as well, but it is before the AD conversion. This is meant to optimize the signal to noise ratio for the A to D converter. If you have very loud music, you should uh, take it back. And if it's small volumes, then you can increase the gain voltage for the A to D converter and have a better signal-to-noise ratio from the system. Last is a desk filter. A sound engineer often works with a mixing console and has the monitors on top of the mixing console. So then, besides the direct signal to the ear, a reflection from the console has to be heard or is part of the signal, um, making the signal a little bit um, less clear, less accurate. So this is a parametric equalizer that, if not compensates, but that uh, makes the effect of this reflection smaller. And you can choose between filters for small, medium or large consoles. So that's a complete set of controls we do have. And um, this might look a little bit confusing. However, important is this last line here. The moment you have all the knobs in the upright or zero position, then you have the factory setting again. If you get lost with all the knobs, you can come back to what it is meant and um, that should be a help sometimes, perhaps. Thank you.